Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And yes, I'm in my dressing gown because in today's video, I'm gonna run you through from base layer all the way up to accessories, how I layer up my outfits for these chilly winter months. Right, so the most important layer is indeed the base layer. Now I was a little bit late to the Uniqlo heat tech party, but man, am I glad I finally showed up. There's lots of you guys recommended the heat tech range to me. So I went in store a couple of weeks ago, picked up loads of different bits from all of the different heat tech collections. Cause there isn't just one, there's normal heat tech, there's heat tech ultra warm, heat tech extra warm. There's lots of different things. They've got underwear, they've got socks, they've got tops, bottoms, they've got fleeces. There's so much to choose from. So I went in, got a bit overwhelmed and picked a few different items from a few different collections so I could road test them all. Now these are both from the ultra warm collection, which I believe is the top level of warmth that you can get from Heat Tech. So I've got the long sleeve crew neck top and the leggings. So this would be my ideal base layer for the coldest time of year. So we're talking here in London, January, February time. So now I'm gonna pop on my base layer. Ta-da! So this is my base layer. It's worth mentioning as well that Uniqlo don't just have long sleeve and long thermals. They also have vests. So if you live in a really, really chilly country in the winter months, then it's worth thinking about perhaps getting some of those layers as well, because they can act as an additional. But for me, I like a long sleeve. It does the job all in one layer. So from this point here, I will then go on to building up my top half. So for my second layer, I'm gonna start off with a relatively thin but warm knit. So over here, I have a few cashmere, what I would call basics, and these are all from Everlane, just because Everlane do really good cashmere basics, and they also do some recycled cashmere options as well. And these are just great for layering, whether it be something like this with a polar neck, so a higher neck, or whether it be a crew neck, or whether you even wanted to add an additional layer and do the polar neck, then with a crew neck over the top, or vice versa, whatever you prefer. But this for me is always my go-to for layer number two. So I'm gonna stick to the basic black, because as you can see from my rail, this outfit is probably gonna be more on the darker side. So I'm gonna pop this one on. I find that these wash really well as well and I don't have to use my debobbler on Everlane cashmere as much as I do on some of my other cashmeres. I just find that it doesn't bubble or I think some people call it pilling. It doesn't pill as much as, as others do. So there we go. So as you can see, this fits a little bit looser and that's one tip for layering. I would always upsize in your second layer because I think a lot of people have a tendency to go for lots of things which are skin tight. And unfortunately, the science of layering <laughs> says that that will not keep you warm. And this also applies to your feet. So if you layer multiple pairs of socks, that's actually gonna cut off your blood supply and make your feet colder than they were potentially with just one pair of socks. Now, I'm gonna layer over a second knit. And again, I have something from Everlane just because I really like Everlane's knits. They're so good. This is from the alpaca range, so, so soft. In fact, they have a bit of a running joke at the moment, which is basically saying that the alpaca may well be softer than cashmere. So shush, don't tell cashmere. And do you know what? They might actually be right. They're so beautiful. The thing is the natural fibers are gonna keep you so much warmer than if you're wearing something synthetic. But the bonus is that they also let your skin breathe because they are a natural fiber. So as you can see, I'm going for a more chunkier knit for my third layer now. And this one has a crew neck. So there's nothing at all to stop you from wearing a polar neck underneath and then layer over something with a slightly lower neck over the top of that. Now your thicker knit doesn't necessarily have to be a jumper, it could be a cardigan. And this one again is from Everlane. This is also from the alpaca range. It's kind of like a bit of a granddad style because it's got these really chunky buttons on it. But this again looks great layered over either a polar neck like this 
or perhaps one of the crew necks because we're going to get to scarves a little bit later. I also understand that there's going to be lots of people, potentially any vegans out there, anyone who has got a high threshold, I call it an itch threshold, to any kind of natural fibres like alpaca and cashmere. I know there's lots of people out there with allergies. So Everlane also have this range called the Pima, it's either Pima or Pima, P-I-M-A, cotton range, and it's kind of like a waffle effect, but that essentially would be an alternative option, and they also have the soft cotton crew jumper, which is really, really soft. I have one of those, but it's currently in one of my summer storage tubs, and those are really nice. They're really breathable, but they also act as a really good additional layer. Now, I'm gonna move on to bottoms. And we all know that I pretty much live my life in denim. So, oh, because you guys know that I essentially live 99.9% .9 of my life in denim. However, this doesn't bode particularly well for me when it comes to layering because jeans are one of the worst things to wear because they don't retain any heat or they don't retain as much heat as what say a pair of perhaps wool trousers would. So, but there are a few kind of ways to get around this. So here I have got the Everlane Cheeky Jean. These are a straight leg. They are quite tight around the bum and they're high waisted, but around the rest of the leg, they do actually have a lot more room than a pair of skinnies. So when I'm popping on my jeans, what I will do is I will tuck in just to avoid any of that extra bulk around this kind of area. I'll just very meticulously tuck in my thermal so that it almost stretches over my bum and has an extra layer of fabric over my bum because no one likes a cold bum, do they? And then a lot of the time I will tuck in my second layer as well, again, making sure that it stretches all the way around the waistband so that you don't end up with super bulk and then do up the jeans. Now, the thing that I love about these Everlane jeans is that they have stretch in them. So when it comes to layering, they're not like a super stiff pair of jeans where they're not gonna give. These actually have a bit of room in them so you can afford to add in a few more layers, which is great. Now, once we're all tucked in and zipped up, I'll just slouch over this top layer. Sometimes I might tuck it in, depends on the outfit. And another note when it comes to jeans, and leg length. I know there are lots of you. Anytime I wear a pair of crop jeans in the colder seasons, you're all like, oh my God, why on earth would you ever be wearing that? And that leads me to socks and shoes. And this is another really important step in the layering process because keeping your feet warm is just of super high importance. If anyone out there has ever gone out and had freezing cold feet, you will know it just makes you absolutely miserable. So keeping those tootsies nice and warm. My tip number one is insoles, furry insoles to be more precise. So these are sheepskin insoles. I buy these off Amazon, although you can buy lots of different kinds of sheepskin insoles from various different places. I know Timpsons, which for us over here in the UK is like a key cutting and shoe repair place. It's a big chain, so we have them all over. They have sheepskin insoles, but they're not quite as thick and fluffy as these. But my word of warning with these is that obviously they are super, super thick. So you do need to have shoes that fit a little bit bigger or you need to have a little bit of room in your shoes in order to be able to wear these. So as you can see, I have a pair here in these Veja V10s and they feel amazing. It makes them feel like slippers. So not only does it keep your feet warm, but it adds a little bit of extra comfort in there as well, which when it comes to footwear is always a bonus. Now, when it comes to the shoes that I choose for the winter months, I will wear shoes that are suitable for kind of all year round. So I'll wear my Veja trainers, any kind of leather trainers. I'll tend to steer clear of canvas trainers. So some of my Vajas, like the Novas and the Waters, you'll notice that throughout the coldest times of 
year. So for us here in London, it would be January and February. I'll tend to kind of wear those less or probably not at all, just because I don't find that they retain any heat. I would go for something like a leather style. I will also go for just normal standard ankle boots like these Chelsea boots. These are from Paige. These again fit a little bit on the large side for me. So it's really good for me to pop those insoles in there and it keeps my feet nice and warm. And if you wanna be super, super practical, then I have these, which are from June. These are a faux fur lined boot. I actually wore these in Disney and as you would have seen on my stories, it was snowing at Disneyland. I mean, it wasn't thick like wading through snow, but it was snowing, so it was chilly. These have a faux fur lining all the way throughout the boots. They're actually really, really cozy inside. I do still have to wear them with a thicker sock, but these for me would kind of be like a practical, but warm, but slightly more stylish shoe option for layering. Moving on to socks. And a lot of people make the same mistake when it comes to socks. And I used to do this all the time and I'd be so confused as to why my feet were so cold. I would put on like five pairs of socks, like maybe just basic cotton socks. Some might be like sports socks. But the problem with that is, and there's a bit of science behind this, is that that causes your feet to lose their blood circulation because you're just layering on tight layer over tight layer over tight layer. And so your feet can't pump any blood, which is what keeps them warm. So my best tip is for socks to just invest in either thermal socks. So these are wool hiking socks. They're not the most attractive socks in the world. They're definitely not the sort of socks that you wanna see on show, but if you're wearing jeans and boots, these are great. And I would literally just wear them on their own. They're really warm and with a sheepskin insole, they would definitely keep you warm. These are from Marks and Spencers and I can't remember the exact name of these, but I've been buying these socks now for the last couple of years and I think they're called extra warm or super warm and they are slightly thicker than your standard cotton sock and they are ribbed but they definitely are a lot warmer so this would be the sort of sock probably not in this gray color but in the black that i would probably wear with a pair of loafers or perhaps with the trainers if i was going to wear the socks on show look which is how i avoid getting chilly ankles so just basically pull my socks up. Now alongside these, if I wanted to layer on one additional sock just for extra warmth, that's the maximum amount of sock layering that I would do. I would layer over something like a cashmere sock because those are much looser fitting, they're not restrictive and they are so warm. They're incredibly expensive just for one pair of socks. Me and Simon have ours from Johnston's of Elgin and they are beautiful. They're great for wearing around the house and sleeping in as well. A lot of people call them bed socks, um, but they're also great for just keeping your feet really warm and as an additional sock layer over something that would fit a little bit tighter. Right, now moving on to the final outer layer, which is coats. So the first coat is probably the most obvious practical winter coat and it's the puffer coat. This one is recycled down, it's from Arquette. This one's actually a shorter version but obviously you can get longer versions. And this definitely is a practical coat. It is warm. It's just not super stylish. Like it's not like a tailored wool coat, for example. So this is great, but this would be something that I would wear very, very casually. So I would do trainers with this, potentially even ankle boots. Definitely keeps you warm, but is not the most chic looking coat in the world. So then we have something like this. This coat is from Toteme. We all know that I can pronounce that now. And this is actually really thin. I know lots of people are gonna look at this and go, oh my God, why would you ever wear that in winter? Because it is so thin. It is, this is a wool and cashmere mix. It is single faced, it's very thin. There's no lining in there whatsoever. However, this would be the sort of coat where I would build up my layers underneath so that I could wear something like this. So it doesn't matter if your coat is thick, or if it's thin, just so long as you've done your layering correctly. And then there's something like this, which is, I suppose, a little bit more traditional, a little bit more workwear orientated, or it has a bit more 
style and substance to it. So this is a recycled wool coat from Everlane. You've seen me wearing this a lot recently. Again, another item that I wore over in Disneyland. And also I took this to Munich with me and along with my thermals and the layering that I've done here, this kept me nice and warm. So this is made from recycled wool. It's got fully lined inside and it's actually quite heavy. So it's quite thick as well. So this would also be another coat that perhaps us European city goers would find appropriate for the winter seasons. So I think this is the coat that I'm gonna go with for this outfit. I'm actually getting really hot and sweaty now because I've had the heater on in the studio just to warm it up before I started getting dressed and now I've got a million layers on so I'm like <gasps> Right, so now we've got the coat on, I'm gonna move on to all of the accessories, the peripherals, if you will. So first of all, I'm gonna go through hats and I know that hats can be a little bit tricky because especially when it comes to beanies, it's difficult trying to find a hat that keeps you warm and doesn't make you look like you've got a condom on your head. So I've got a couple here. This one is from Arquette. This is alpaca and merino wool. This one for me is a little bit tighter fitting, but this, because it's double layered here around this section, it does keep your ears nice and warm. However, my current favorite hat is this one from Cezanne. And this one is alpaca and mohair. So admittedly it is a little bit, not itchy, but it causes like a little bit of, well, yeah, I suppose itchy. <laughs> There's no other word for it, it's a little bit itchy. But what I love about this is that it is super slouchy. It doesn't fit tight. Like as you can see, there's loads of room in there and it kind of flops off the back of your head, which I really like. And this just feels nice and warm, but it doesn't feel tight. It doesn't feel like my ears are muffled, like this one does a little bit. Um, and it doesn't cause any kind of hair kinking either because it's not as tight fitting. Now I'm gonna move on to scarves. And as you all know, I have quite the love for the Acne Canada scarf, of which I have four here in various different colours. The reason I love this scarf so much is because it's huge, for one. I'm just going to show you this camel one. So it's a blanket scarf. It's like an XL size. It's pretty decent in width, and then it's super long, so that you can wrap it around twice and it's chunky, it's warm, it's soft. I don't find this itches at all. I have the wool version because they're 140 pounds and 140 pounds for a scarf is already <gasps> like so expensive, but there is also a super soft cashmere version, but that's 340 pounds. However, and other stories do some really good basic scarves as well, which are essentially the same as this but without the logo. So I will link those down below in the description box for you. I have another scarf here, which is a relatively new addition to my wardrobe. This is from Totemi again. And this one is so long. And lots of you after I was wearing this over on Instagram were asking me, which do I prefer, this or the Acne Canada scarf? Well, as you can see, this is so long that you have to wrap this a good few times around your neck. I could even go once more, but I'm not going to, just to be able to get this kind of not draping on the floor effect. Uh, this is really nice, really, really soft, not quite as expensive as the Acne Canada scarf, so it would definitely be something to kind of bear in mind, especially if you like your premium brands. Right, I have popped on my boots and layered on my scarf again, just so that I have finished the outfit so you can see it in all its glory. And that is essentially my kind of process of how I would layer up an outfit for the winter season. And I'd be quite happy and quite warm going out in London in this when it is chilly. Now, if anyone has got any other tips or any other brands or anything to do with keeping warm in winter, do leave all of those down in the comments section below and we can all share and trade tips. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.